Hi, I'm Ivy. And I'm Susan, and we're thrilled to be here. We believe we're standing on the verge of a cultural shift in which the arts can deliver potent, accessible, proven health and well being solutions to billions of people. You know, there's a new paradigm emerging where the arts are being used to humanize medicine, education, and business, and where data science will continue to play an important role in moving humanity forward. So we all need to develop more holistic skills that embrace the arts and humanities, feeling our way into the future, because we're literally wired for art. When we talk about art, we are including all of the arts, theater, dance, singing, music, visual arts, digital arts, architecture, and so much more. We've been optimizing for productivity since the Industrial Revolution, pushing the arts aside because we were told either we were not good enough or questioned the relevancy to our careers, thinking that the focus mostly on productivity and efficiency would make us both successful and happy. But we all know we're not. This is an image of a Colombian cave rock painting that represents the experiences of daily life. To better understand how we got to this point in history, the two of us began to think deeply about the role of the arts and aesthetics once played in our lives. We humans are both makers and beholders since the beginning of time. And the arts and aesthetic experiences in all their forms have been used for many purposes self-expression, communications, collaboration, reflection, healing, and flourishing. They are our birthright. We spoke with E.O. Wilson, the Harvard evolutionary biologist, who shared that the art making was essential to the development of us as a species. Biologically, we learn to make art and to be moved by aesthetics by connecting to our senses using sight, sound, touch, smell, and taste. You visually process 34,000 different pieces of information in a single hour. Over your lifetime, you'll process some 24 million different images. Each of your fingertips have over 3,000 touch receptors that rapidly change your neurophysiology by releasing a cascade of neurotransmitters like serotonin and dopamine. Your nose can detect one trillion odors and it has over 400 types of scent receptors and the cells renew every 30 to 60 days. Sound becomes an excellent tool to help regulate stress. And in this case, it works on an unconscious level. The frequency of sound instantly taps into what underlies beneath your conscious recognition, literally changing the vibrations in your body. We believe that it's essential to come back to our senses, to enliven us and expand our capabilities as whole human beings. You know, the ancients knew what Julie Bolte Taylor, a neuroanatomist, is telling us here in this quote. Most of us think of ourselves as thinking creatures that feel, but we are actually feeling creatures that think. We now know that we experience over 34,000 different feelings. And so in the spring of 2019, the two of us had the opportunity to put these neuroesthetic principles into action in real time to illustrate the effects of sensory perceptions on our bodies in an exhibit called A Space for Being. This came to life through a collaboration with Google, Susan's Lab at Hopkins, and architect Suchi Reddy. Participants walked into a space where they were fitted with a custom band containing sensors that were continuously taking in biological information, including body temperature, variable heart rate, and pulse. Participants were invited to touch, smell, listen, and explore for five minutes in three different rooms with no talking, no devices, no photos. Each of the three rooms were designed with a different set of neuroesthetic principles that affected the choice of colors, textures, materials, shapes, music, scent, and lighting. At the end of the experience, guests had their bands removed by a band tender and their data was downloaded for them only and of course deleted after we shared the information with them. 
Each visitor received a personalized data visualization revealing in which space their bodies felt the most at ease or most relaxed. This conclusion was based on their real-time biological feedback being fed into the algorithm that we developed. And as predicted, in over 56% of the people, the room they liked the best was not necessarily the one in which their body felt the most at ease. The point is that the body is feeling all the time and our mind is not necessarily connected. The experiment was a success as we were able to show that what we think is not necessarily what we feel and our body is feeling all the time through our senses. As Ivy mentioned, the exhibition was the first time the public experienced the science of neuroaesthetics or neuro arts in action. This is an emerging interdisciplinary field that has exploded over the last 20 years because technology has allowed us to get inside our heads and study the extraordinary ways the arts and aesthetics impact us. Neuro arts is the study of how arts and aesthetics measurably change your brain and body and how this knowledge can be translated into practices that advance health and well-being. Research is proving that we are literally wired for art, and these experiences alter a complex physiological network of interconnected systems, both neurological and biological. The arts literally engage every system in your body, and the implications for this are profound. How these systems connect and change happens through a process called neuroplasticity. Each of us are born with 100 billion neurons that connect at a synaptic level. You have quadrillions of connections in your brain creating endless neural pathways. These pathways underlie your body movements, emotions, memories, basically everything that you do. You are make, when you're making a memory or learning something, you're actually making some synaptic connections stronger and some weaker through the saliency of your experiences. In this way, you're actually sculpting new pathways that have not been there before and encoding a new memory and changing your brain. As we showed in a space for being, your body, your entire body, not just your brain, takes in the outside world, but much, much of it sits outside of your awareness you're only conscious of about 5% of your mental activities. The rest of your experiences, physical, emotional, and sensorial live below what you're actually thinking. But you couldn't possibly pay attention to all the sensory stimuli that's coming into your body or the many emotions and thoughts that emerge. Your brain filters out the inputs that seem irrelevant and focuses its attention on what it believes to be pertinent, and in fact, prunes or deletes what's no longer relevant. What is salient to you is important to you, either for practical or emotional reasons, and the arts and aesthetics are some of the most salient experiences. This salient information enters your body and has unlimited capacity to change and enhance your cognition, emotions, perspective, mood, decision-making, and so much more. So why should the arts and aesthetics matter to data scientists and to the field? Your field is exploding. Over the next 10 years, employment of data scientists is projected to grow by 36%, faster than any other occupation. You are at the forefront of new advances in technology. You're meaning makers of enormous amounts of information and you're storytellers. Your skills to use data to analyze, understand complexity, influence others is unparalleled and will only increase as advances in technology continue to accelerate. You are in a unique position to use data science in service of humanity by expanding your cognitive and emotional capacities to meet the imperatives that, meet, that are before us. The good news is, Business, government, education, and other sectors are beginning to understand that building skills through the arts and aesthetic experiences are not a nice to have, but that they are essential. To zoom into on why the arts and aesthetics are important to you individually as a data scientist, here is some compelling evidence-based findings to consider. The good news is you don't have to be proficient at the arts for them to have significant impact on you as a maker. And you also gain valuable benefits, even if you're just a beholder of the arts. 
So let's start with mental health. Here are just a few examples. Research is proving that people who engaged in the arts were found to have lower mental distress, higher mental functioning, and improved quality of life. Music played at certain frequencies decreases levels of cortisol, a hormonal marker of stress, while increasing oxytocin, a hormone sometimes used to treat depression and anxiety. And studies show that dancing for even just 15 minutes reduces anxiety and increases feel-good hormones, including endorphins, serotonin, and dopamine, to name a few. And also dancing is highly effective in creating new neural connections. And believe it or not, working on an art project for 45 minutes, regardless of skill, reduces stress by 25%. The arts and aesthetics also increase your cognitive skills. Musical training improves visual spatial abilities, executive functioning, and memory in adults with specific neurological pathways supporting these effects. Participation in visual arts and dance improved pattern recognition and observation skills, as well as skills in emotional recognition, cultivation of empathy, identification of story and narrative, and awareness of multiple perspectives which is so important today. Engaging in dance practices improves neuroplasticity, including significant increase in cognitive function, memory, and attention. And classical music significantly increases working memory compared with no music. You know, researchers coined the term the Mozart effect after finding that listening to 10 minutes of Mozart resulted in improved spatial temporal reasoning. Art practices also increases synapses and gray matter, which supports cognitive skills. And even doodling increases attention and focus, retention, recall, and consolidation of memories. So start doodling in all your meetings. Making art increases the speed of cognitive processing. Who wouldn't want faster processing? And Arts increases, of course, your capacity for imagination and creative thinking. We're beginning to understand how our brains can turn off portions of the prefrontal cortex to achieve these flow states, which does improve overall well-being. And expressive writing increases our ability to form complex ideas and articulate emotions and feelings, which is so important. And reading poetry lights up some of the same parts of your brain as listening to music does, stimulating your primary reward circuitry and activating reflection and introspection. And what's so incredible is that skills learned through both arts making and beholding transfer to many other areas in our lives. When we zoom out and look at the collective value to the field and societal benefits, they're exponential. The arts have the ability to improve numerous outcomes related to the field of data science. They can improve pro-social skills, including empathy, trust, and compassion, problem-solving skills, including creativity, reflection, and critical thinking. Additionally, the arts have been used as a tool to teach data science concepts and improve data literacy. So here are just a couple of collective values. Listening to music has positive effects um, on people that can and make them more tolerant, empathetic, and generous. Empathetic responses to paintings are a result of mirror neurons, which engage emotional circuitry of joy, fear, or anger to mirror the emotions expressed in that artwork. Appreciation of art has also been seen to increase inspiration and creativity, and participants who engage in appreciating works of art are better able to generate creative solutions and show enhanced performance. The arts can enhance reflective thinking, which can also in turn improve decision making and problem solving processes on multiple levels for critical thinking. And even dancing can trigger our social brains to connect and bond. And this propensity for synchronicity is something that we innately do as humans. Storytelling can be used to present creative ideas and to build creative thinking and problem solving skills. The arts can improve creative communications and foster leadership skills. And finally, epidemiologists are also showing that when we engage in arts experiences as makers or beholders, we make better decisions throughout our lives. The arts can expand the field of data science to see the entire 
picture of possibilities. So please, if you haven't already, in addition to good nutrition, sleep, exercise, and those important data deep dives, add the arts in your life for both the benefit and well-being of yourselves as well as humanity. These arts and aesthetic experiences help us know and feel the wholeness of what it is to be human. Thank you.